Beijing is set to take on the U.S. dollar in an unprecedented way as China becomes the first major economy to create a digital currency. It's a new form of innovation at a time when everything is going digital. But while cryptocurrencies offer a new world of privacy, reports note that China's version of a digital currency is controlled by its central bank, which will issue the new electronic money. And as a result, it is expected to give the Chinese government vast new tools to monitor both its economy and its people. It would also create a new opportunity for global reach at a time when the U.S. is involved in conflicts around the world and countries are taking steps to ditch the U.S. dollar. So joining me now to discuss is BoomBest co-host Christy I. Now, Christy, what can you tell us about this new CBDC or central bank-backed digital currency by China? Well, this is something that we've talked a lot about before. China has been developing this CBDC for a few years now, ever since 2014. So it's really nothing new. In terms of how it works, from a user's point of view, it's very similar to existing commercial digital payment methods in China, such as Alipay or WeChat Pay. Digital wallet stores a fund, generates a QR code that can then be scanned by the store's payment terminal. And the digital RMB is designed to replace circulating cash, such as coins and banknotes. So from a government standpoint, what you said was absolutely correct. The digital RMB will give policymakers greater visibility into how money flows around the monet around the economy, and also to allow them to experiment with targeted monetary policy interventions for specific economic classes, regions, or groups. And while all of that sounds well and good, it also means that the government will be able to see exactly how you spend your money, when, where, and how much. They can even block specific transactions that are deemed inappropriate or dangerous. So it's like having a constant parental monitor on your bank account, which really makes it not your bank account anymore, right, if you can't mm -hmm. spend it how you want to. So since the technology is here, it's really naive to think that central banks, not just China, but central banks around the world won't take advantage of the tools at their disposal to strengthen their control over their own individual economies, respectively. So Sweden has also tested the digital krona. The Bahamas created the sand dollar. But China is the first major economy to create its own digital currency. Wow, that is crazy to think about a central bank being able to come in and literally block your transaction as you're trying to make it and to interfere that much with your regular transactions as you go about your day. Okay, so we've got these privacy concerns that are out there and that are being voiced right now. So how will China promote this use and adoption of this digital RMB? Won't there be pushback? Well, so far, they really haven't received that much pushback since from the user perspective turn model, everything's the same. Chinese people are already accustomed to mobile payments with four out of every five payments going through an app such as WeChat Pay or Alipay. And China already has 770 million mobile payment users. So to further facilitate acceptance, China also conducted free money lotteries. So 750,000 people got some free money in these lotteries, which was incentive to onboard its citizens. And then other incentives that they're rolling out also also included eligible discounts when refueling a car and rebates to test consumer appetite and acceptance, which so far seems to be going well. So it is now working on a method to allow the app to work even without an internet connection. So it's scary to think that soon China will require everyone to use the digital currency and paper money will be completely invalid. Right now, the CBDC has officially entered the second phase of its pilot test, which has now expanded to cities such as Changsha in the Hunan province. Wow, and we know that the U.S. is watching this rollout, watching to see exactly how it goes. Now, when it comes to different digital currencies, are there risks to the cryptocurrency market once this launches officially? There are some risks to Bitcoins and the other altcoins as China pushes ahead with this. That's because the eventual rollout of this digital RMB could seriously weigh on the crypto markets if China officials tighten regulations at the same time. There may be some panic selling if the new rules end up sucking liquidity from trading platforms for digital coins. So right now, Chinese citizens, they're already banned from converting RMB to tokens. But the practice still continues under the table using Tether or the USDT stablecoin. So according to chain analysis, more than $18 billion worth of Tether moved overseas from East Asian addresses over a one-year period. So this indicates that citizens are using Tether to dodge the rules that limit capital transfers abroad, and that China is a huge contributor to Bitcoin's liquidity. So all this volume goes through Tether and China. So there will be a huge liquidity shock to the broader market if issues arose that affected the ability of domestic and foreign investors to use Tether. And as regulators become more and more restrictive on stablecoins, 
points, that could be also very negative for the markets. So right now, a draft PBOC law is setting the stage for the virtual RMB, and that includes a provision prohibiting individuals and entities from making and selling tokens. And in recent days, China's Inner Mongolia also banned crypto mining. So while there's still no official launch date yet available, this is something that the entire crypto community is keeping a very close eye on. Yeah, and it definitely sounds like a crackdown on those cryptocurrencies is taking place and could become much broader as they go forward. Now, what about the United States here? Why is Washington so afraid of this project taking off? Well, it kind of threatens the U.S.'s agenda that we talked about for isolating China and trying to contain its sphere of influence. It also removes one of the U.S.'s main trump cards, which is, to, which is total control over the SWIFT network and the U.S. dollar reserve status for trade settlements. So the popularization of the digital RMB could be a major tailwind for the future globalization of China's currency. First, China will probably launch the digital RMB with its trading partners, which would then help to lift its status as a global settlement currency. And once that becomes a norm, it's likely that the RMB's reserves currency status could further rise as the world further de-dollarizes. And analysts forecast that its share among the reserve currencies may reach about 5% by the end of 2025. And this would imply a demand of over $300 billion worth of RMB. And then, meanwhile, on the flip side, U.S. trade policy could lead to more de-dollarization, especially in the Middle East and Russia. Under the guise of national security, Trump apparently made a global mess of things, slapping on unilateral sanctions on Iran and Gazprom. So, in general, competition is very good. And finally, there is a challenger now to the USD, so other countries can actually choose what to use. And it, so, really, it really is the end of the U.S.'s ability to unilaterally call all the shots. Wow. Great insight, as always, and a lot of stake here with a lot of moving parts. Christy, I thank you so much for your time.